Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to our session, Exploring the World of Assistive Technology. Um, we're just letting people in now, and there's lots and lots of you to come in. So I'm going to talk uh, for a little while as you come in. Uh, we're expecting quite a few people. It'll take a couple of minutes to get you all in. Welcome, good afternoon. Happy sunny spring afternoon. No, it's not. Anywhere in the UK today, it's raining. I know that because I've watched the weather, weather forecast. Um, yep, you're still coming in, only about half full as far as I know from what I'm expecting. Um, so we're going to explore the world of assistive uh, technology with you this afternoon. Um, some of the things you come across probably won't be mainstream, um, but I'm hoping that it does, uh, you do find it relevant and that the type of technology we talk about to meet some of the needs we identify you do do come across and you'll find this interesting. Um, we usually called it, if only I'd known, because so many people tell us at the end of the session, if only I'd known this technology was out there, if only I'd known you could have solved this issue with this uh, technology solution, um, then that would have been great. And that's what I think we're going to try and bring to you uh, this afternoon, a quick, um, well, it's never that quick because we talk forever, but uh, certainly a, a, a not in-depth uh, overview of assistive technology. Um, do you want to move on to the next slide for me, uh, Sam? And we'll, uh, I'll start to pull it together as we get the last few people in. Um, so um, with sight and sound technology, uh, I'm Glenn and my uh, colleagues, Sam uh, and Tony are running the session today and we're working with Katie and Claire, and I'll uh, introduce their organizations in a second. Um, how are we doing for numbers? Yeah, I think we're getting there now, so I'll sort of kick off. So yes, the session today is introducing assistive technology. We're sight and sound technology, best known for being the UK's largest supplier of technology and support in blind and low vision. But we also work with a lot of literacy, behavioral uh, and other conditions which I'm sure you uh, encounter on a daily basis in your professional and probably personal lives as well. Uh, we are experienced at everything from auditing and assessing people's needs, chiefly through providing the types of technologies we're going to introduce you to. And then the most important part, we think, is training people how to use it and supporting them in life. Because as I'm sure you're aware, uh, people who struggle uh, in any part of their life uh, sometimes ch have a challenge of getting technology to work in the way they need it to work to meet their needs. And that's where the real rubber hits the road, in my view, is making it work for people. And that's what we do through training and tech support. Uh, the way we're going to go about it today is we're going to introduce you to some different scenarios, different case studies where people have a certain set of needs, certain set of uh, challenges in life. And we're going to show you some of the technologies that might make their lives easier, help them meet their ambitions and goals. Some of it we'll actually demonstrate for you live, technology and broadband permitting. Um, we love to do these face-to-face -face where you can get your hands on the tech and play with it, but actually uh, through uh, this medium, we can get to more people uh, from their, in their homes, from our homes, uh, but unfortunately sometimes the tech lets us down and we, freeze and things like that. But anyway, we'll see where we get to. Um, you can ask questions in the chat box at the bottom of the screen, and we'll uh, either answer them as we go along or we'll pick them up and bring them into the session. And um, yeah, let's see how it goes. Next one, Sam. So we are running this session and we're really thankful to Katie and Claire from Digital Social Care and Skills for Care. They have extended uh, our reach by uh, connecting with you in your professional lives. So uh, I'm sure you can read what's on the screen there. I won't go through in any detail, but they work with you in your professional lives. They bring you uh, support, they bring you education, they bring you knowledge. And um, that's how we scammed our way into this uh, webinar with you. So thank us guys for bringing us along. And uh, I think the next slide is over to Sam to kick it off. Yep, that's right. Thanks, Clem. Okay. Okay, off we go. Welcome, everybody. Good stuff. Yeah, welcome, everyone. Good afternoon. 
So our first scenario, this is our first of three that we're going to be looking at today. Um, visual impairment, sight loss will be the, the main theme, um, but there will be a scenario later on that focuses on uh, somebody with a physical disability as well. But our first scenario that we've got is Marnie. So a little bit of background on Marnie. So he's 35 and he's currently unemployed due to health issues. Marnie's visual impairment consists of strabismus and amblyopia. So Marnie has issues due to this with his stereoscopic vision. Uh, many of us have heard of a, a squint before. Uh, so commonly, most commonly known as, as a squint um, would be Marnie's visual impairment. Um, and due to persistent squinting, Marnie has difficulty reading for long periods of time. He also has difficulties with navigation. So indoors and outdoor navigation is tricky. And we're going to be looking at some solutions to uh, counter that in, in, a little, in a little while. And also Marnie's 3D vision um, is, is beginning to deteriorate. So he has issues with depth perception and also struggling to find the edges of steps and stairs, that sort of thing. Okay, so that's all the background we've got for Marnie. And now we're going to have a look at some technology solutions that we feel would support Marnie in those areas. Before we do that, this is just a, a sort of a brief simulation of how Marnie sees the world. So you can see on the left there, quite severe blurred vision. And on the right hand side there, somebody with strabismus, um, so the sort of severe squint there, you can quite see it's a very shaken image. Um, so that's quite um, that you can understand that that we're quite disorientating um, and would cause certain issues with, with navigation, especially. Good. Now, let's have a look at our first solution. So this one is a smartphone. Uh, most of us are familiar with smartphone devices today. Um, most people have a, have, a, have a smartphone of some of some sort. Um, now, this was specifically designed for somebody with a visual impairment. It's made by a company called Capsis over in France, and it's an Android device. So it runs on an Android platform, okay? And it has three different methods, um, three different ways in which you can interact, or somebody with a visual impairment can interact with the phone. So you can use a touch screen on the top of the phone there. You can use the tactile keys on the bottom, but you can also use your voice. Now, this is key. Um, now obviously, Marnie, so, uh, as a young person, you may want to be connected on social media. You may want to catch up with emails, with you know, with with connecting with friends, with family, etc. All of this is possible using the Smart Vision 2, and you can download any apps that you need. Although it is designed for somebody with a visual impairment, it doesn't restrict the phone in any way. Um, you can use this phone just as a sighted person would um, with a with a regular smartphone. So that's the Smart Vision 2. Next up, we've got the Sunu band. Now this is a mobility smart band. So it's worn just like a wristwatch, okay? Now we know that Marnie has difficulty or lacks confidence with, with navigation, with spatial awareness um, um, due to his blurred vision. Now the mobility smart band, Sunu, see, has a sonar portal on the front there. So that sends out a sound wave, which then hits an object, sends a, a wave back to the band and it will vibrate. And obviously, depending on the severity of that vibration, it will give Marnie an indication of how near or far away he is from that particular object, whether it be a person, a wall, a door, a chair, a table, whatever it might be. You can adjust this to indoor and outdoor mode and you can customize the settings. OK, so you can um, reduce the area in which it covers um, up to five meters. Um, and you can also, as I said, it's got an indoor and outdoor mode as well. You compare this to a smartphone app. Okay, so this is where the Smart Vision 2 will come in handy. And using the app, okay, Marnie can use the Sunu band okay, to plot navigation. So he can wander down the street and via the app, it will give him step-by-step, turn-by-turn directions. Okay, as well as he's got that object avoidance as well. So he's, he's getting the vibrations telling him how near or far he is to a certain object. And he's got the step-by-step -step navigation coming through the audio from his mobile phone. Okay, so it's a brilliant little device as Sunu and connected to the app, it's even better. Now, next up, we've got an app. Now, the world of apps now that we live in, um, so many apps now are being developed for people with a visual impairment or with, with sight loss. And Super LiDAR is one of two apps that's been developed by a company called Mediate. And I've got a video to show you in a second, which gives you a bit more, uh, bit more information about this. 
But I think this is brilliant. Um, super LiDAR, essentially, this would allow somebody with a visual impairment okay, to locate objects around them. Okay, it would allow them to locate doors, um, stairs, etc. It would also locate people. Okay, but this app was actually specifically designed to help visually impaired um, socially distance. Okay, so it will even tell you if a person is wearing a face covering. Okay, it will help you with depth perception. Okay, it uses a, a 3D mapping to scan the layout of your environment, and it gives you lots of audio feedback. Okay, and I've got a video to show you in just a second on Super LiDAR. Um, but this is a brilliant app. Sadly, it's only available at the moment for iPhone 12 Pro and an iPad Pro. It's not available on, on any other um, models at the moment, but that is going to change it in the future. So that is Super LiDAR. And next up, we have we have the Envision glasses. Tony's going to demonstrate these for us in a second. A pair of uh, smart glasses on an uh, it's an Android device, as well. Um, but this is a, a brilliant device that, that and Tony will talk us through all the uh, well some of the features in just a second. And then finally, we've got another app, and this one's been developed by Microsoft. And this one um, is. It actually started live as a research project by Microsoft, and they've now developed it into a beta version. So it's not its fully formed version yet. But again, um, I've been playing around with this over the last week or so, and I think it's absolutely fantastic. Um, it's called, obviously, Soundscape. And essentially what it does is, rather than giving you step-by-step -step navigation to a location, it gives you audio cues, Okay, which, as it says, it enriches the ambient awareness of your environment. Okay, so you're encouraged to use this in conjunction with a navigation app. Okay, there's other apps like Blind Square, for instance, that, that help with, with navigation. But what um, Microsoft Soundscape does is that it allows you to plot your route by setting a, a sound beacon. So you, you via the app, you find your location, you, you put a pin in that location, which they call a beacon, a sound beacon. And then from your location to that beacon, it gives you different audio cues, okay, depending on which way you turn. So if a, a car is coming from your left-hand side, you'll get the sound from the left-hand side. If there's, I don't know, a, a, a phone ringing from the right-hand side, you'll get the, the audio from the right-hand side, et cetera, et cetera. But I've got a, a video to show you more about this in a second as well. Uh, but this really is a brilliant, a brilliant app. And I think this is definitely sort of the future of, of, of navigation um, in this sort of capacity. So, uh, so that's where we're at at the moment. So what we'll do now is I'll show you a, um, I'll show you a quick video of the Super LiDAR uh, to begin with, and then Tony's going to demonstrate Envision for us. So this is um, Mediate, who have created Super LiDAR. Mediate is a research lab that produces mobile applications with cutting-edge technology and AI to help blind and visually impaired people. Mediate has two apps, SuperSense and Super Litter. SuperSense is a smart scanner app that is designed in the simplest way to remove any obstacles between the user and the app's interface. Move further away from it the document. It scans documents. Move further away from the document. Processing. Document is ready for reading. Recognizes barcodes. Recognizes Money. 100 currencies. United States dollar. Explores the environment and speaks out what it sees. Laptop. Laptop. Super Litter is a simple litter-based app which allows you to detect distances of the objects and people, and discover whether people have a mask on. Increase productivity and joy in daily life with Mediate. Good. And now these very short, is a very short videos just give you uh, more details about the features of Super LiDAR. Um, now 20 seconds long each, so we'll do this. When scanning around, Super LiDAR emits a high-pitched tone to let you know that the space ahead is open and clear. <laughs> Super LiDAR detects the people around you and tells you whether or not they're wearing a mask. A person with a mask. A person with a mask. A person with a mask.
Super LiDAR helps you navigate by detecting the distance between you and the objects in your environment. Seat at 7 feet. Seat at 6 feet. Seat at 5 feet. Seat at 3 feet. Seat at 4 feet. Okay, there we go. So you can see the, the clear benefits there for somebody like Marnie, okay? Struggles in his environment, you know, at home, perhaps lives alone, needs to navigate around his uh, his apartment, okay? Um, the, the, the benefits of Super LiDAR especially are, are fantastic. Um, it really would help with that depth, depth perception and orientation. Um, good, I'm gonna hand over to Tony now, who's gonna talk us through the Envision glasses. So I'll just stop my screen share. Thanks, Tony. Just muted at the minute, Tony. There you go. Uh, there you go. Okay, thanks, Sam. Okay, so um, have you spotlighted me, Sam? Mm -hmm. you don't show me. Okay, right. Envision glasses. Let me show you how these work and what they're about. Um, see those? They are the Envision glasses, and you'll hear a lot of talking. This is the business side. It forms the right hand arm of these Scalip glasses, the left hand arm being as as you'd expect uh there's no lenses uh there's a camera on the front here now if i switch this these off and put these no take those off put these on okay i'm faced with um or it tells me i'm on the home screen and i've get a lot of information through there like the date the time the battery condition things like that um but what does it do well essentially it reads to me so I've got a document here. I need read. So I go into a feature which is read. Can you hear that through me Bluetooth speaker, Sam? Identified. Yep, loud and loud and clear. Yeah, okay. All right. So we want to read. So I'll double tap on read. And there's various features in here. So we'll go to scan text. I'll double tap it. Now you're gonna hear a series of beeps, which is text detection. Um, picking up how much text is in view to the camera. Where am I? There. Actually, t Tony. If yeah. You could just if you could just turn the volume up a little bit, that'd be helpful. Just on the on the Bluetooth on. speaker. I'll bring it closer because I've got it up as max as I can on this. Ah, okay. Right. Yeah, that's that better. better. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I've got a reasonable frequency of beeps. I know there's a lot of text detected, so I'll double tap. Let's just take a picture of that text, and now. It will start to read that back to me. Certificate number two. Certificate information and formation continuing. Guest certificate is Okay, so all recipients must keep it. I'll stop it there. Wipe down again to exit. No need to go through the whole document, but you get the gist of that. That will read. But something it does that's unique to this particular device is it will read handwriting. I've got a greetings card here birthday card so we'll go into scan text again i'll get my ticks when it picks up the text and i'll double tap it and it's just taking a snapshot of that here here sue a very happy birthday east glenn barrier state it's a of and helen Okay, so we'll come from there. So, as I say, completely unique to this device that will read the handwriting as well, which is shush. That's better. It's packed full of other features. Um, you can have a scene described, you can identify objects, you can explore uh, an area. Uh, as you walk around, it will tell you what's in front of you. But one feature that is brilliant, in our opinion, I'll go through to it, it's called Call. Now, I've got a list of, they call them allies. So these are contacts that I know I trust. They could be friends, relatives, workmates, or whatever. I'm going to double tap on call an ally. Have you got yours ready, Sam, or not? Yes. Okay, so if I call an ally, it's going to give me a list of all the people that I've got registered on here. So there's Sam. So I'll double tap on that, and it says connecting. Oh, Tony's calling me. <laughs> okay, so Sam should be now seeing exactly what this camera is picking up. I've got you. Yeah, I'm just going to spotlight. 
I'm going to spotlight my camera so hopefully everybody can, okay. can see. Like All right, yeah. So, imagine this. I'm on the station up the road. I don't know where the booking hall is. I can give Sam a call. Call Sam. Can you guide me? Sam, they've changed the layout of the road here. Can you help me work my way through these roadworks so I can get to the uh, pub up the other end of the street? Because I'm allowed to go there now. Um, <laughs> but you can you can you can understand um, how this is going to help a visually impaired person using the Envision glasses. Okay, I'll drop that call. And we do also have a two-way conversation. So Sam hears me. He sees where I am. I can hear him. He can guide me or... It could be that I want to know what the latest, you know, what, what's this dress like? Uh, Sam, does it suit me? Um, Double tap to call an ally. No, an ally we'll is come a out of that. But as I say, it's packed full of other features. Time um, won't allow us to show you them all, but it's worth looking on our website if you're interested to see what other um, features the uh, Envision glasses have got. So thanks Hi. for that. I'll pass you back to Sam. Perfect. Thanks, Tony. That's great. Um, yeah, so again, clear benefits there to Envision for, for somebody like Marnie. Okay, if he is unsure of his surroundings, his environment, he can call for sighted assistance through the glasses very, very easily. Good, so we'll just reshare the presentation. Now I've got a video for you um, to show you Soundscape, the Microsoft um, 3D immersive um, navigation app using 3D immersive sound. Um, so I'll Explore leave, leave and get a sense of any area in the world with Soundscape Street Preview. When on a location page, select the Soundscape Street Preview button to gain a rich sense of the street layout in 3D audio. You will be virtually transported to the middle of the street next to your chosen location. Using your phone as a pointer, the street names are called out as you turn. When facing the street you want to go down, Tap Go to advance to the next intersection. At each intersection, you can use the phone again to choose which road to go down, or explore your immediate surroundings using the familiar soundscape buttons along the bottom of the screen. And now from the search bar, you can start beacon guidance to any point of interest, explore the area in richer detail, or change your virtual location. For example, Let's say you want to preview the street layout around the Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris, France. From the home screen, search for Notre Dame, and then from its location details page, you select the Soundscape Street Preview button. For the best experience, we recommend that you stand up and turn in place, and use stereo headphones. You can slowly turn your phone in either direction to hear the street names at each intersection. Let's say you want to hear what the walk will be like from the Notre Dame Cathedral to the Pont Neuf Metro stop. You do this by going to the Explore Nearby button to search by name or filter for a list of public transit locations nearby the virtual location. Once you have the Metro stop selected, you can start an audio beacon in your virtual experience. You will return to the Soundscape Street Preview homepage and now hear the beacon sound providing 3D audio guidance towards the Pont Neuf. If you press the go button, you'll hear information at the next intersection. Approaching intersection. Rude as England times, goes left, rude as Pivoy times, goes right. Soundscape Street Preview is best used to get familiar with street layouts and explore places. So please, take some time to play and experiment with the Soundscape Street Preview feature. Enjoy and have fun. Okay, there we go. Now, um, at the moment, Soundscape is only available on iOS devices, only available on, on iPhones. Um, so if Marnie did want to benefit from using Exp Soundscape, he would need to, uh, the smart vision wouldn't be compatible. Unfortunately, he would need an iPhone um, at the moment. Um, but I'm sure they will be working on crossing platforms eventually. Good. So there we have it. Those are our five solutions for Marnie. Um, lots of audio navigation based um, based devices. Um, the Sunu band obviously giving him sort of a physical um, sort of um, physical feedback, if you like, uh, of, of, of his uh, object detection, um, but paired to the app giving him audio as well. And the, uh, the apps especially uh, really giving him that security, that confidence and empowering him to leave the house, um, to navigate outdoors, um, but also to 
you know, feel more comfortable at home as well. So there we go. That's our first scenario. Um, and now I'm going to move on to scenario two. Uh, just before you get there, uh, Sam, I just want to do answer the price. Someone asked the price of the oh, yeah. Envision glasses. That's uh, 2695 Um Not cheap, but actually a thousand pounds cheaper than anything else like it in the marketplace. Uh, Lynn says she can't find Soundscape on our website. Yes, I'm not quite sure that's there uh, as an app. Uh, we need to get that up. So action taken to get that up on our website. We have we haven't got all the apps uh, that are in this um, presentation on our website. Uh, some of them are quite new. So we'll catch up on that one. Uh, ASAP, uh, thanks for that. Yeah, no problem. Um, and it's free. Soundscape and Super LiDAR yeah. are completely free. Um, so yeah, enjoy. Um, good. All right, so next up we've got Elizabeth. Tony, do you want to talk us through uh, the background? Yep, no problem, we'll do. Okay, so Elizabeth, 69-year-old retired teacher. Keratoconus and dry eye syndrome uh, is what uh, her issue, she's, which are uh, causing contact lens irritation. It, shush, it even sounds playful, doesn't it? Um, Elizabeth used to regularly attend a local book club and her difficulties include locating text, particularly the beginning of words or sentences, operating a mobile phone or tablet, Visual halos after dark. I think Sam's got uh, uh, an example of that coming up. Uh, and difficulty reading a television screen. So that's Elizabeth. Um, let, let, let's have a look at the way she might see the world. There you go. Yeah, not good. Not good. Uh, with the halos around the streetlights and things like that. Extremely disturbing. And also, just um, to add to that, there. Visual halos may be caused as well um, by you know television sets, especially yeah. late at yeah. late at night as well. So not just not just outdoor lights. Uh, any illuminations, yeah. Yeah. So what we're going to suggest for uh, oh potential solutions. First up is SkyQ voice guidance. Uh, now it's a screen reader for SkyQ. You're you're familiar with SkyQ um, through said. Uh, television organization provides spoken navigational guidance uh, through the uh, menus on the screen. Uh, this is brilliant. I don't know why it's only Sky that are doing it, uh, but as it says, it's not available for Netflix or Disney or Amazon Prime just yet, but it will help uh, people navigate their um, electronic programming guides on the television and their, their Sky Q boxes altogether. Next, uh, Real Sam. Is this going to be new, Sam? Real Sam speaker. <laughs> not um, connected. Not okay. connected at all. Okay, so this gives you access to audio books. Um, Twenty-seven thousand audio book titles available to you. It also uh, allows you to access uh, radio podcasts and talking newspapers. Now it works with Google Home and and Amazon Smart Smart speakers. And I'm not going to say the words because you'll start talking to me over in the corner. Uh, but that's real Sam speaker. Next, we've got uh, the Minivision phone. Okay, a simple uh, to operate uh, mobile phone. But I'll, I'll show you that a little more detail shortly. Next one. Seeing AI. This is a free app for uh, Apple devices, iOS. Um, it turns the uh, world into an audible experience. So, um, it will describe things to you. Uh, it speaks text as soon as it appears on the screen. Now, I did that with the um, Envision glasses. There is a feature called Instant Text, which will do that. But this is an app that will do it through your phone as well. Um, it will give you audio guidance. Uh, so if you're, if you're scanning to read a page, it will give you a certain amount of audio guidance to get the orientation right, get it lined up with the... Uh, camera on your iPhone or, or whatever uh, so that you can uh, take a snapshot and have it read back to you. Have you got any videos on these, Sam? Sorry. Yeah, we're going to have a look at yeah, a video yeah, of Sky and Sky seeing AI. Yeah. And seeing AI. Okay. Yeah. And finally, the Synaptic tablet. Now, this is uh, a tablet. Uh, it's based on a Samsung tablet, as it happens, with um, some software overlaid on it. Uh, overlaid on Android uh, operating system developed by Synaptic. 
as you can see from that image, it uh, does give you a very simple menu structure to operate your um, Android device. You can change the color contrast, you can change the size of that text that it, that it shows, uh, and it will speak back to the menu. So rather than like on any other smartphone, you've got icons dotted all over the screen, you don't know where you are, it just frazzles your brain. This will list them quite logically. We've mentioned the synaptic tablet in the scenario, so obviously Elizabeth um, struggles um, to operate a tablet. Um, I know from my experience, my nana, she's 83, um, and isn't visually impaired and struggle with a tablet uh, to begin with, but now it's it's sort of her, uh, uh, everything is that tablet. She uses it for everything, but for obviously for somebody like Elizabeth, this would allow her to access the internet, online shopping, do many other things as well. Um, now the Synaptic software is brilliant. Um, it can be used on a phone and on a tablet. Okay, so this, I've got an Android phone here. This is a, a Samsung device. Um, Synaptic is only compatible with, with Android, Android devices. And essentially, there we go. And I'm gonna change my audio as well. So hopefully you can all hear the audio from the, from Synaptic. And there we go. Good, now. Main menu, main menu, page three of six, there we go. volume up. Let's turn that down slightly. There we go. So as I mentioned, Synaptic is a piece of software that you can add to an Android phone or a tablet. And it make, obviously makes that device much, much more accessible for somebody with a visual impairment. Now, I'm aware that the, there is a little bit of, of blur because of the, uh, the streaming of the video. So I do apologize about that. But you can already see that the all the menus, all the, the, the uh, text there on the screen, is of high contrast and it's also magnified. But as well as that, obviously everything is audio based. Main, men main menu, page one of six. So if I just hold my finger on the screen. Make a call from your address book or dial a number. Text messages, 17 unread. Address book, phone settings. Next page of main menu, main menu. And then when I release my finger on the chosen application or the chosen menu and release it, it will take me into that. So it's taking me into the uh, the next next menu. Email. Emails. WhatsApp. WhatsApp. Calls and chat over the internet. Release my finger. Service. App is running in background. There we go. WhatsApp. Privacy terms of service. Soft main menu. There we go. Let's Page just turn two the volume of six. down. Volume down. Volume down. Volume down. Um, and, the, and the software works in exactly the same way on a tablet as well. Okay. So uh, Catherine. Uh, sorry, Elizabeth can very easily navigate around her tablet by either using the, the sort of swipe and release or the, the slide and release um, um, technique, sorry, or she can obviously, depending on, on how much usable vision she has, main menu, main menu, she can main just menu, tap on the arrows, main menu, tap on the cross menu, to go back. Main menu, main menu, main menu, there you go. Page one of six. She can also use a voice to dictate an email, dictate um, text in a web field, um, in a form field, etc. dictate text messages, etc. cetera. Um, so this is, Synaptic software really is a brilliant piece of software to, to help um, a visually impaired person, you know, navigate around a phone, navigate around a tablet. Um, and it's actually very popular with uh, people of Elizabeth generation. Um, it seems to be, you know, uh, the one of the most accessible ways in which Somebody that's maybe not as tech literate, let's say, or, or as confident with technology um, to, to navigate a phone or a tablet. Um, good. There's lots of other features packed in there, but I, I obviously I won't go through them all as we don't have a great deal of time. Um, good. Let's have a look at a video now. I'm going to remove my spotlight. And there we go. Just going to change my microphone back over. And hopefully Tony's taking care of the imposter. Yeah, we, it's funny. Shortly after saying that, two participants dropped out. So, ah, okay. Well, thanks, Tony. It's a bouncer in a former life. There you go. <laughs> Good. So, let's have a look at a. Let's have a look at the SkyQ accessibility features. Now, Tony mentioned voice guidance. This is just one of SkyQ's accessibility features. Obviously, there's audio description. 
We've got subtitling and signing for any deaf or anybody that's hard of hearing. But you can also invert colours. Now, Elizabeth struggles with visual halos at night okay, due to the Graticonus. She can invert the colours on her television screen in order to combat that. Um, so let's have a look at some accessibility features from Sky. From the home screen, go to Settings, then Accessibility. Here, you can turn audio description on or off. You can also choose to hear a beep when audio description is available for a show, when you're changing channels whilst watching TV. You can turn subtitles on or off and choose to highlight shows on the TV guide to have either audio description or subtitles available. Shows with subtitles are marked with an S and shows with audio description are marked with AD in the program description. Press the question mark on your remote to quickly turn audio description and subtitles on while watching TV. You can turn on voice guidance which will talk to you to help you navigate your way through your SkyQ menus, TV guide and more. We also have a SkyQ accessible remote available which has easy to fill buttons rather than a touchpad. To order a remote call 03442 410333. For more information on accessibility visit sky.com forward slash accessibility. There we go. So um, that's SkyQ accessibility. Tony, do you want to give us a run through of the, the Minivision mobile phone? Of course. Yeah, no problem at all. Um, let's just, that's better. Okay. Right. Just so Minivision. Thank you. Um, as I said to you uh, a little earlier, Minivision, a simple uh, mobile phone with voice feedback. Um, it works on Android, but uh, you can't go off to the Google Play Store or whatever it is called these days and download other apps. You are very much what's on here is what you've got, but it's packed with features. Um, let's let's start moving through. Right, there's my applications. Go back there. So obviously we've got a phone, we've got a contact list, we've got messages, there's an alarm and a calendar, and so the list goes on. But everything is read out to me, and it's all listed rather than icons dotted around the screen. Um, this is not a touchpad. It is just literally a screen. It is all operated with tactile buttons, the whole thing. So if I wanted to make a call, I press the button here. Uh, and then I've got call or contact, dial a number. It also shows my call history and a, a speed dial to the voicemail. Now, um, if I... Bear with me. Let's go back to the beginning. Right. If I press and hold this button, you'll hear a beep. Phone Tony. Okay, so it's not going to go because there's no mobile network available, but it would be calling my number now because I'm in the contact list. You can also read in a number. So uh, if it's not in your contact list and you know the number, you can dictate the number. Um, messages. Uh, you can, once you've got through to the edit field where you would normally type your message, which you can do using the keypad in the normal way, you can dictate that simply by pressing that central button again and dictating your message after which it will read it back to you ask you do you want to change it or send it you just tell it to send and off it goes so um not only can you physically type you can dictate uh it, it's it's that simple to operate um this this ring around the central button is your navigation button so it will take you through all the all the options available if you want to increase or decrease the volume, you just press left and right on the. 
Um, you can set alarms, you can change the ringtones, you can set speed dial, speed dial buttons. Um, it's also got an SOS. So if I press and hold this button here, I wasn't going to do that. For a 20 minute, 20 minutes, 10 seconds, it will send out um, either a message or a phone call or both to a predetermined number or numbers. Uh, now that message you did dictate mindset emergency. Um, so that will go out to the contacts I've selected. It could be my children, uh, could be my wife or something like that. Uh, and it will send an SOS out just like that. So extremely useful. But the point about the uh, mini vision two is its simplicity. Um, you haven't got all this nonsense. Um, so if, if someone takes you out for dinner tonight and you've got your smart vision, you won't be sitting there looking at each other's phone. Uh, you'll actually be talking to one another. So there's a social media expert aspect of uh, the smart vision too. Back to you, Sam. Thanks, Tony. Good stuff. So next, uh, before we just review the solutions for Elizabeth, we're going to have a quick look at the Seeing AI app, <coughs> which again is a, a Microsoft creation available for iOS devices. Seeing AI is a Microsoft research project for people with visual impairments. The app narrates the world around you by turning the visual world into an audible experience. Point your phone's camera, select a channel, and hear a description. The app recognizes saved friends. Jenny near top right, three feet away. Describes the people around you, including their emotions. 28-year-old female wearing glasses looking happy. It reads text out loud as it comes into view, like on an envelope. Ken Lawrence, P.O. Box. Or a room entrance. Conference 2005. Or scan and read documents like books and letters. The app will guide you and recognize the text with its formatting. Top and left edge is not visible. Hold steady. Lease agreement, disagreement. When paying with cash, the app identifies currency bills. 20 US dollars. When looking for something in your pantry or at the store, use the barcode scanner with audio cues to help you find what you want. Campbell's tomato soup. When available, hear additional product details. Heated microwave bowl on height. And even hear descriptions of images in other apps like Twitter by importing them into Seeing AI. A close up of Bill Gates. Finally, explore our experimental features like scene descriptions to get a glimpse of the future. I think it's a young girl throwing a frisbee in the park. Experience the world around you with the Seeing AI app from Microsoft. Okay, there we go. So that's uh, Seeing AI. Um, good, so just a review before we move to our final scenario. Um, lots packed in there. Um, just going back to, to Catherine's sort of difficulties, Obviously, reading used to um, be a member of a book club, but now is unable to, to see the text. So obviously, we need to be looking at audio. So the real Sam speaker, smart speaker, which is available for, on an Amazon Alexa or a Google Home smart speaker. And this essentially is a, it's an audio library. You've got thousands and thousands of, 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 of books, podcasts, talking newspapers, all the audio content that Catherine, sorry, that <laughs> Elizabeth may need would be packed into this uh, smart speaker and all she would need to do is speak to the speaker and ask it to, re um, to read it to her. Um, good, obviously difficulty operating a mobile phone, tablet, she's got a few options there. The Minivision is a very basic handheld tactile mobile phone that you can also speak to and everything is read out loud. Or we've got the Synaptic software which can be placed either on a tablet or on an Android smartphone and again makes that device much, much more accessible. Seeing AI would obviously help Catherine around the house. It would also scan text for her, read it out loud. And then visual halos at night watching television. She can invert her colors on her sky box. She can also ask the sky box, sky cue box to read her TV menus to her as well. So she's got that reassurance as well. So lots packed in there. Um, good. Now let's uh, move on to our final scenario of the afternoon. Good, so now we've got Yasmin. So a completely new set of circumstances. Now Yasmin's 43, she lives on her own and she was diagnosed with tetraple tetraplegic cerebral palsy, cerebral palsy, age two. And Melissa's visual impairment 
is caused by CVI, cerebral visual impairment, and they're commonly, CVI and cerebral palsy are commonly um, combined uh, together. Melissa, she does volunteer for a local charity, okay, and she provides an online support service. So we know that Melissa, sorry, that Yasmin does use a computer, or needs to use a computer. Yasmin has a limited mobility, okay, and due to the cerebral palsy, she's now unable to use a mouse or keyboard effectively. She experiences light sensitivity and often experiences visual fatigue. And Yasmin, sorry, not Melissa, <laughs> uses a smartphone, okay? So a few key points there. We know that uh, Yasmin does need to use a computer. She also uses a smartphone as well, and she does have some physical limitations mobility issues as well. Good, all right, let's have a look at some uh, solutions for Yasmin. Good, first up, we've got Dragon Naturally Speaking. I've got a video to show you um, for Dragon in just a second. But in a nutshell, this is a piece of dictation software. So Yasmin can dictate, she can just, she can speak to her computer. She can actually control her Windows computer entirely by voice commands. She wouldn't need to use the mouse. She wouldn't need to use a keyboard for anybody that has a physical impairment that restricts them from, from using uh, a computer. Dragon would allow you to control it entirely by voice. Okay, it would also allow you to dictate emails, to ask it to open a web page. Um, it would allow you to, to you, you can control your mouse, control your keyboard entirely by voice command. Okay. Also the dictation there as well, as it says, it's three times faster than typing, a 99% accuracy rate as well. So that's Dragon, naturally speaking. Next up, we've got Apple accessibility features. Okay, now many of us have Apple devices, whether it's an iPhone, an iPad, but we don't know that there is built-in accessibility features within the device already. Okay, that come included, and we just they're there. We just uh, have never sort of stumbled across them. But for somebody like Yasmin, she's already a smart, she's a smartphone user. Okay, if she uses an iPhone, okay, if she goes into settings accessibility, there's a whole range of features there that would allow her to use her mobile phone much more effectively. Okay, voiceover, for instance, is a screen reader. So everything on her iPhone would be read out loud. She could zoom and enlarge the screen, you know, if if she needs to enlarge the, the text, the menus, whatever it might be. There's also now a feature called voice control, okay, which is Apple's sort of built-in version of Dragon, essentially. Um, you can speak to your Apple device and control it entirely by voice. Okay, so there's a whole range of, of, of customizable features packed into an Apple device that Yasmin could benefit from. The OrCam, Tony's going to demonstrate this for us, another wearable device similar to Envision, but also um, quite different in, in, in some ways as well. So Tony's going to demonstrate that for us, essentially a text-to-speech device, but it has built-in smart reading features. So again, because of Yasmin's physical limitations, okay, she can use her voice to speak to OrCam and ask it to read or scan a page of text and then read it out loud for her. And then using voice commands, she can ask it to read from a certain area of the page, start from a certain word, a certain paragraph, read the headlines, read the dates, whatever it might be that she needs. She can ask Orcam to do that for her. Zoom Tech Software, another piece of computer software for a Windows machine. Okay, now this is a piece of magnification software. Okay, we know that Yasmin needs to use a computer for a voluntary role, that she works for the charity. Zoom Tech would be um, would allow Yasmin to magnify her computer screen entirely, but it also has a number of other features or customizable features built in. She can adjust the filters, the color contrasts of the screen. Um, she can enlarge the mouse, okay, the, the mouse pointer or the cursor. She can hover her mouse over some text and ask it to read it for her. Whatever the mouse uh, is hovering over it would read it aloud. She can highlight a whole passage of text and ask for that to be read out loud, et cetera, et cetera. You, you get the idea. There's a lots of features built into Zoom text that would uh, allow somebody to use a Windows machine more effectively as well. And then finally, okay, this is probably the, uh, yeah, the sort of uh, the most unique solution that would uh, we've come across today. This is a uh, this is a Dyson vacuum cleaner, but as uh, unlike you've seen one before, okay, this is a smart vacuum cleaner called the robot the 360 robot and for if any of you that's not come across smart vacuums before again this is completely cordless completely wireless completely hands-free this can be 
controlled by a smartphone app, okay? But it can also be set to a timer. It will wake up. So if you're out of the house, if you're at work, wherever you might be, it will wake up and start a clean at a set time, okay? It's got hazard detection built in, so it will navigate around certain objects, cables, tables, chairs, whatever it might be, all built in. I've got a video to show you on this in just a second as well. Um, I, one of our colleagues that we work with um, at Sight and Sound, he actually works for a charity up in Scotland. He's got one of these and um, he said it's one of the best investments he's ever made. His flat's never been cleaner. He's completely blind, he's a guide dog user, um, and he sets it to clean when he's out, out and about, comes back and his flat's sparkling. Don't know if it does the washing up though. Um, but still, um, yeah, that's the Dyson 360 robot vacuum cleaner. Good, so Tony's gonna whiz through the Orcam for us, aren't you, Tony? Yep. Yep, Thank yep. You. Although it's just told me to please wait. It keeps telling me to wait. I don't know what I'm supposed to be waiting for, but let's let's try this now. <laughs> see what happens. Okay. Oh, it's told me it's ready again. Okay, okay. so the wonders of technology. Right. So as as Sam said, another wearable. So this is the Orcam. This is uh, just magnetically attached to the uh, arm. This one will go either side, whereas the Envision glasses is always on the right. Um, as with the uh, Envision glasses, it's all touch gestures to operate it. So if I switch glasses. Okay, and then I will simply hold the text in front of me and I will double tap. No, no, I won't double tap at all. That's the other one. Or single tap. And that's just done exactly the same thing as the Envision. Yeah, your audio is very low. Sorry, say that again. Your audio is very low, old chap. Is it? Ah. Bear with me. Okay, so. Yeah, that's much better, Tony. Is that better? Okay. Yeah. A child is in front of you. Okay, so that. This summer, discover something. That's how I stop it. Just hold my hand in front of it. Now, it did say it's picking up uh, all of your videos, uh, images on the screen, and it just said a child is in front of you. So uh, it's referring to me, was it? No, it was Katie next to you. <laughs> <laughs> it, it I just detect. now. Um, Sam mentioned this this smart reading feature. Now, um, um, let's let's just see if I can get this to do it. Start smart reader. Smart reading has the following focal commands. Smart reading, read everything, find, start from, jump to, read the article. This summer discover something that you didn't know existed. Julia and Stuart, owners of Rayleigh's boat hire Ralph Parvin. It is start smart reader, isn't it, Sam? Smart reading, ING. Start smart reading. Smart reading has the following focal commands. And he wants to give me the instructions. What smart reading will you never need to do? Something. Yeah, so it's basically what Tony's demonstrating there is you can, if you're using the voice command smart reading, it will then automatically take a snapshot of the page. And then using voice commands, you can say things like read everything or read the articles or read the headlines, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so yeah, entirely by voice. Um, yeah, so so somebody like Yasmin, obviously with with physical um, limitations, wouldn't need to use her hand to tap the side of the Orcam. She could use her voice. Um, yeah, and 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 to that end as well, it's got automatic text recognition. So if yeah. you're picked in front of it, it will automatically uh, go through the process without you having to tap or anything of that nature. Now, there's a big difference between the two devices. The Envision glasses do require an internet connection. I'm using the one at home. When I'm out and about, I'll use uh, my phone as a mobile hotspot. So I've got internet access. Um, this one doesn't. Uh, it's all self-contained. But whereas the other one will do your uh, scene describer and things like that, this one, it does it to a certain extent. You can say what's in front of me and it'll tell you a door or stairs, but that's about it. Whereas the other one will it'll tell you there's a dog in front of you, there's a cat, there's a chair, there's a bench and things like that. So big differences between the two. 
Um, this one doesn't have that ally, call an ally feature, whereas the Envision glasses does. So it's all very much horses for courses. Um, both very good, both easy to use, <laughs> says he. Um, both easy to use and effective. Tony, somebody's just asked actually in the um, Q&A box, uh, do you need to take your glasses off to wear the Orcam? No, um, not the Orcam. The other one I'll explain in a moment, but you'll notice on here, there's, you probably can't see it. Yeah, that little ridge there is just attached to this arm with uh, what are like zip ties and there's two magnets on that correspond with two magnets on the back of here. So I could put that either side on these glasses and then just attach it. So yes, no, you don't need to do that. The other one uh, does have some alternative frames, uh, Smith Optic frames that you could take to your optician to have prescription lenses put into those. So you can use prescription lenses with either um, by using your existing glasses or by having the uh, optic frames modified. Right. That answer that one. Yeah, thanks, Tony. Yeah, so obviously the um, somebody did ask earlier about voice commands with um, Envision, the first wearable device that Tony demonstrated. There aren't voice commands built into Envision at the moment. That That is a development that they're going to be releasing soon. But that's why we've added Orcam into this scenario is because, obviously, as I mentioned, with Yasmin's physical uh, issues, um, yeah, uh, using the voice commands to help with reading would, would be really beneficial. Um, good. Okay, thanks, Tony. I'll uh, just reshare my screen for everyone. And we'll have a quick look at the Dragon Naturally Speaking software. This is a dictation software that I discussed a short while ago. Okay. Welcome to Dragon Home. When you use Dragon Home, comma, think of it as using your voice as a keyboard, period. We've streamlined Dragon Home with more accurate speech recognition than ever before, comma, a more user-friendly Dragon Bar, comma, and full text control in your favorite web browsers, comma, Microsoft Word, comma, and Outlook, period. New paragraph. Dictating is easy with Dragon Home, period. Just turn the microphone on and write your back hyphen to hyphen school shopping list while making dinner, comma, jot down your thoughts as you write a paper, comma, make a post to social media, comma, or send an email to your grandson with your voice, exclamation point. New paragraph. Microphone off. You can even make corrections, navigate through a document, and format text with your voice, like this. Back hyphen, two hyphen, school backpack, charity drive, colon, new line. Cap backpack, new line. Cap ruler, new line. Numeral six, pencils, new line. Numeral two, spiral notebooks, new line. Three pocket folders, new line. Numeral five, pens, new line. Cap magic markers, new line. Cap colored pencils, new line. Pencil case, new line. Sharpener, new line. Glue stick. Select back through colon. Bold that. You're on uh, mute, Sam. Sorry, <laughs> I just said we'll pause it there because I'm sure you get the gist. Um, but as you can you can see or you can hear from the, the demonstration there, you do have to use your voice to dictate everything. So commas, full stops, any punctuation needs to be dictated as well. Um, but you can you can operate your computer entirely by voice. You don't need to use. I actually demonstrated this for a chap up in Scotland. Pre pre lockdown, he'd had a stroke, so he had he had physical difficulties as well. Couldn't use his keyboard or a mouse, um, and he used Dragon in combination with Zoom Text um, to operate his his machine, stay in touch with his family. Email was very important to him, um, and 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 he was able to do that. So um, 
so yeah, so it's effective. Um, and that's so that's Dragon. And then finally, um, we've got a very short video to show you the the uh, the drag uh, the Dyson robot vacuum cleaner. There you go. So that's the Dyson robot Hoover. I mean, it's uh, it's pretty impressive. Um, but it's uh, yeah, I must admit they're not cheap. Um, that particular model is around eight hundred pounds. Um, so <laughs> that would be um, yeah, that would be quite a lot to ask for that for Christmas. But um, but I'm sure this technology it has to um, sort of reduce in price um, over time. I'm sure it will as it becomes more accessible, more sort of mainstream um but it's um yeah quite impressive technology um, and advancing as well so there we go so those are the solutions for yasmin um again lots of of, of dictation lots of, of uh, options to use voice rather than sort of physical touch um we've got magnification in there as well to support her cvi um and built-in accessibility features as well in in an, in, in an apple device uh, an existing smartphone device that, that yasmin has Good. So that's that. That's our three scenarios. And uh, and these are our, just a very quick overview of all of the solutions that we've covered today. Again, we've, we've whisked through all of those. Um, and we've sort of just touched the, the tip of the iceberg as well. There's lots, lots more um, uh, that, that we could we could share with you. Um, but hopefully you've got something from that. So I'll hand back to Glenn to, to tie up the presentation for us. Thanks, Glenn. Thanks very much, uh, Sam. I was just looking because we had a question asked, how much is the Dyson 360 Hoover? And I didn't know the answer and, and I can't work out whether it's 730 pounds. Uh, yeah, I, seen on the... I did say 800, but it's, it's, yeah. in that, it's in that ballpark. Yeah, but there yeah. are there are, um, there are cheaper options. That's just, I mean, Dyson is notoriously expensive, isn't it? But there are other options, other, other stuff, brands. Yeah. Okay, thanks very much. Look. Um, uh, I hope you've enjoyed the time you've spent with us today. This is a season we're doing of, uh, of webinars. So we're choosing different solutions and different scenarios uh, and different technologies uh, each time. So we're going to pop up in a few more weeks with another one. Uh, so we try to keep them uh, to the point. This one has been very much around uh, low vision technology, apps, uh, handheld software, and a lot of the wearables, which are the brand new um, uh, uh, really the brand new products that are coming to market now that everybody wants. There are lots of places you can go to find out more information. Uh, we've got a downloadable smart app called WHAT, what AT, WHAT, AT, uh, iOS and Android. You can download that onto your smartphone. has lots of eye conditions, low vision, some literacy uh, and uh, telehealth type solutions with uh, technologies that fit them. You can go to our website, and find uh, information, lots and lots of uh, interesting content to view on our Sight & Sound YouTube channel, five minute coffee cup videos up to long webinars. Um, Sam, myself, Tony, we are, we're specialist advisors. We can come out and work with you out there in the field and help you with your client base, no cost, no obligation. We just like to help people, educate people. And of course, if the technology is relevant, we like to provide that as well. We're best known for our tech support team who keep this whole damn lot running. So you can always call us uh, uh, at our company, Sight and Sound Technology, and we can help you out there. Um, but I think the best place to go is the YouTube channel and you'll find a whole uh, raft of information that uh, will help you. Um, 
there's there one more slide i think yes i think that's yeah. uh thank you very much uh, actually the, um oh no actually the last one yes we've just popped up onto our website a referral portal so right up at the top there there at the top it says referral portal you can register yourselves on there and then you can refer clients to us by clicking on that and uh, uh passing us information for clients who that is uh, uh relevant uh for and then you can track how that interaction between us yourself and the client goes so you're always able to um get some support through that channel for us as well so thank you very much for spending the last uh, hour or so with us we'll see some of you again hopefully in a few weeks time with a new set of scenarios and technologies but until then um let's just hope the weather gets better eh see you all soon thanks bye thanks everyone thanks everyone take care bye